know, it's, it's a very unique uh, period of time for everybody, especially our program, because uh, when you welcome 10 new players, I think that's a challenge. But welcoming those same 10 with the backdrop of COVID, uh, I don't have a ton of answers for you. Uh, I know this, that we have a very hardworking group. Um, our guys are up early in the morning. Um, we're following the COVID protocol, you know, first and foremost, just making sure that it's safe for our players, for our staff and anybody that's involved. And then we, we kind of go from there. But, um, you know, that's where we're at. Um, I, I do think we're making progress, but I just don't have as much information as I normally do. Hey, Coach, uh, just want to ask, you know, with, with no fans being allowed at games possibly throughout the season and with McHale Center being one of the best home court advantages in college basketball, what kind of impact do you think that'll have on the team? And is it a bigger disadvantage possibly for Arizona simply because of the home court advantage you typically enjoy? No, it's, uh, you know, I feel incredibly bad for our, our players first and foremost. You know, our, our competitive advantage so often in recruiting, and it's been this way uh, for three decades here at Arizona is, you know, young people want to go to a, a community where they really care about college basketball. When they, they want to come to a community like Tucson where they love college basketball. And you feel that with your home court, McHale Center. I mean, we've led the, the Pac-12 in attendance, I believe, for 35, if not 36 years in a row. Um, I don't think we'll lead them this year. I know a couple of people have wanted us to to uh, maybe our, our attendance to decrease a little bit. It's, it's definitely going to happen this year. I promise you that. Uh, if you want to say that our attendance is going to be down, it, it's going to be down this year. But prior to this year, uh, 35 years in a row uh, with a, leading the Pac-12 in attendance, playing in front of 14,000 fans constantly. It's a big reason you want to come and be a part of our program or coach and be a, a coach in, in this program. So, yeah, it's going to affect us. Uh, you know, we haven't played any games, so uh, I'm sure it's going to, you know, affect every team. You know, home court advantage in college basketball is really important. And there are a lot of programs that have taken advantage of that hostile home court advantage arena that, that we all have uh, or some of us have. So without that, it is going to be different. But, you know, it's up to us to adjust I also feel, uh, you know, bad for our fans. I mean, they love college basketball. They're used to coming to McHale during the, the wintertime. And uh, to not have that opportunity is certainly going to be different for them as well. So, uh, again, having never done it before, I, I don't think any of us can truly tell you how it feels until maybe we go through it. Earlier uh, today, a report came out that the, this program would receive uh, notice of allegations just curious, uh, what have you heard about that? And does it, does it fit the timeline? And were you expecting it at this point? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on, uh, on anything that uh, is, is around in, uh, any, any investigation. I mean, that's, that's uh, really uh, what, I'm, what I'm called to do as a member of our athletic department. And uh, so I'm not able to comment. Uh, it came out yesterday that Jordan Brown got the first gold jersey for practice, his performance. What can you say about him and taking that next step for next season? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I appreciate it. Uh, Jordan Brown uh, is somebody that was here a year ago. If you guys remember, he uh, transferred from Nevada and uh, was able to practice with us and work hard behind the scenes a year ago. So, you know, Jordan not only knows our system uh, better than a lot of players on this year's team, but uh, he had a really good year. You know, like so many of our players, I would have loved to have had in April and May and the three summer months, June, July, and August with Jordan here. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to, to, to be in Tucson, but he's a great kid, an incredibly hard worker, great teammate. I was very talented, you know, in high school, he became a McDonald's All-American, uh, played on a very good team in Nevada, They're, uh, an experienced team. So although he had a role, uh, he was uh, really behind some talented upperclassmen. Uh, we were thrilled to get Jordan on a transfer. And, uh, you know, a year ago, just watching him compete every day against Zeke Naji and Stone Gettings, Chase Jeter, um, Last year's front court, you know, Christian, I mean, we had some great battles every day in practice. And I think that helped Jordan's year ago. 
uh, not only was he working behind the scenes physically and on his game, but, you know, being able to practice and compete against the front court like that, we had some great battles. And I think that year of development has served him well. So uh, Jordan's one of the most experienced players on our team. And uh, I think he's going to be a very productive player, uh, not only in our program this year, but I think he's going to go on and, and have a great career. But he did win the gold jersey, uh, so he was our overall best player in uh, in our first week of practice. Coach, uh, not only did you have Jordan, you had James, who transferred over from Georgetown. They both uh, got to watch the team last season and practice with you guys. How helpful is it to have two of your most experienced players going through that process? And with James, who would you compare him to in years past in coaching, not only here, maybe at Xavier? Have you coached anybody like James before? Yeah, you know, James, I'll put him in the same category as uh, a Jordan Brown. Maybe the difference being that, you know, James was the Big East freshman of the year two years ago when he was at Georgetown. Uh, and uh, again, being able to welcome him back to the West Coast and add him to our program, it's uh, it was a very important addition because – it was to my earlier comments, he's not only an excellent basketball player and talented, but he has more experience, you know, being through a year and a half of game competition, uh, being here a year ago where he practiced in our second semester and again, played every day against Nico Mannion and, and making each other better. Um, so, you know, I think we expect a lot from James. Uh, who he reminds me of, uh, he's got an inner toughness that, uh, you know, you either have it or you don't. He has it. And uh, he's always uh, he's always won. You know, when he played uh, and on his travel team, uh, he won the Peach Jam uh, on the EYBL circuit. And, you know, Peach Jam is just – it's a moment of truth for a lot of players and teams. You know, that's really a great competition before you get to, to uh, college and – you know, he rose to the top there and uh, led his team to that Peach Jam tournament, uh, playing in high school here, uh, played in a very, very good high school program for an excellent coach against great competition in California in the Bay Area. And uh, he won there. You know, he, he won at Georgetown, especially in that first year there uh, when he was there from start to finish. So uh, I think he brings a lot of leadership qualities. He brings a toughness to our team. Uh, obviously, that position, the point guard, the guard position in college basketball is is incredibly important. And uh, and I, I feel really good about about who James is. You know, he reminds me a lot of uh, Terrell Holloway, who uh, I, I coached at, at Xavier. And if, if you remember to Holloway, he went on to have just an historic career at Xavier. Uh, he also reminds me a little bit of Mark Lyons, the combination of those guys, their personality, the way they play, uh, not shying away from the big moment. You know, I think James has a lot of those uh, really good qualities to him. It seems like Azulis might be a big name as far as the international newcomers among the big men. Can you talk about him a little bit? Yes, you know, uh, uh, Azulis is um, a front court player. Uh, he's six foot nine. He's big and strong. Weighs maybe 235 pounds. Uh, lifting weights in our strength and conditioning program is only helping that. Uh, like a lot of successful freshmen, you know, the strength factor is negated with him and that he is big and strong. Um, and there is a learning curve for him, like there is for all freshmen. And then there's a second learning curve for him in terms of NCAA style and FIBA. And uh, I think that he shows as much upside almost as any player on our team, you know, meaning that if you judged him on a week ago or yesterday, it's like each day it seems like he's really getting more comfortable and growing. Uh, I, I would say that, uh, you know, his ability to run the floor, he's left-handed, uh, being able to score at the 17-foot marker and eventually move out to the three-point line, he can really face the basket and drive the ball from that area. Uh, he rebounds it well. We're going to play him at both the four and the five. I would say we'll play him more at the four, though, than the five. And, um, you know, I think the sky is the limit for him. Um, I, I will tell you that, you know, he, he has a number of areas that uh, he can really improve in, and uh, we're eager to help him improve in those areas. Um, I was wondering, Sean, your thoughts on the, how the schedule's shaping up and – 
you know, I know it's been crazy and there's been con- concerns about you want to play at home, but I'm also wondering if, if maybe because you do have so many new guys, that was maybe part of the reason you're scheduling the way you are, which is, you know, a little bit on the, for you guys anyway, on the softer side. You know, our first and first thought is just health, uh, you know, for us to get on an airplane, uh, and, uh, travel and be away from Tucson if we don't have to it's clearly in our team and players health and wellness to be here uh to be uh in their own apartment or or dorm room to be in McHale Center to be tested every day to be in a real strong regimen uh on a daily basis uh that's first and foremost um and then we had mutual agreements, you know, going to both Illinois and Gonzaga. If, you know, if you're their program, they played in front of 14,000 people in McHale Center. And, you know, they, when we returned to their home court, I think they would like the same opportunity for their fans and their teams to play us in front of their great home courts. So we just postponed those two uh, non-conference games. Uh, we didn't cancel them at all. And I think both parties agreed, uh, you know, in terms of the preseason NIT, obviously it's not going to be played in New York. Uh, that tournament folded before the four teams that were uh, scheduled to be in it. Uh, I think one of the four dropped out. And then as we looked at traveling to Florida at the cost, how much it would cost for us to fly there and back, to stay there, uh, then throw in some of the points I made about our players' uh, health and wellness. Uh, It just makes more sense for us to uh, play our non-conference schedule here to improve and uh, to prepare for our Pac-12 games, two of which are going to happen before Christmas. So we already are playing an away game and a home game against the Pac-12 team before Christmas. So you know, to some degree, Bruce, we didn't have a, a choice on who we were playing. And we're still hopeful that all those games will stay on our schedule. But I don't think there's a guarantee that that will happen. Uh, you know, number one, uh, because of uh, COVID, uh, the game could be canceled. You know, number two, um, a lot can happen between now and the game that's scheduled. So that's what we wanted to do. And uh, we hope we could play a non-conference schedule. I do think it'll develop us. Uh, to not have our red blue opportunity scrimmage opportunity exhibition opportunity you know those three things all help prepare your team and develop you know even like for example you know checking in a game when you sub into a game like none of our guys have ever done that that are from you know in our international players I know that sounds silly but you know you, you tell somebody to check in how how you substitute in a game in in college basketball is different so you know having a timeout being able to play with referees, uh, you know, we've never experienced that. So uh, we're going to get all of that experience during our non-conference season. And uh, we're going to try to do the best that we can. 